Welcome to Warehouse Automation Matters. I'm your host, Mary Hart, and I'm here today with Tim Dolchich, Director of Engineering, to discuss the role of robots in 3PL fulfillment. Can you start off by telling us a bit about your role as the Director of Engineering at DHL Supply Chain and how you got involved in the 3PL space in the first place? Yeah, so um, as the Director of Engineering at DHL, um, my team and I are primarily focused on um, implementing and optimizing uh, technologies uh, specifically within our e-commerce group. Um, how I got started into supply chains, actually kind of a, a fun and interesting story. Um, you know, studying industrial engineering um, at the University of Dayton, um, the summer of, before my senior year um, was actually thinking about going into manufacturing and uh, met a gentleman umpiring a baseball game who was the director of um, HR for a, um, uh, a supply chain company. Um, and, you know, after some back and forths and a couple incidents on the field, um, he actually handed me his card after the game and said, give me a call when you're interested in a job. Um, fast forward six months later, we had a conversation and have been working in supply chain um now for 15 plus years um ever since so um as i always tell everybody you never know where you're going to find your next job so uh always keep your eyes open that is very true i appreciate it so tell me about at dhl supply chain what tasks or processes have you automated with robotic systems yeah so our, our primary focus of you know automated robotic systems within our warehouses is you know, those functions that are able to help people um, and improve their experience, um, you know, within the warehouse. You know, those are features like assisted picking, unloading, um, loading, sortation, you know, those sort of jobs where they're either tedious um, or we see them as an opportunity to be able to improve service to our clients or um, be able to improve safety um, and worker experience within our warehouses. So how do these robotic technologies integrate with your existing warehouse management systems? Yeah, so I mean, integrate a couple different ways. You know, we, we utilize everything from, you know, direct integration into, you know, warehouse management systems to integration with warehouse control systems, um, as well as, you know, smart robotics integrations. Um, at, you know, at the end of the day, it, it comes down to the need of our client um, and how we customize that solution to be able to support their um, SLAs and the, ultimately their customers' needs. Can you share some insights on the selection process for these robotic solutions? What were you looking for? What were the challenges that you had that you were looking to overcome by selecting robotics? So a lot of these robotics, when we look at them, you know, we're looking at, you know, what are the needs of our clients? And, you know, ultimately that's driven by, you know, what are the needs of the consumer? Um, you know, across different avenues and different products, you, you have different requirements and you have different um, opportunities to be able to service those clients who ultimately service their, their e-commerce customers. When we look at these technologies, we're looking at how can we build out a solution that allows them to meet that customer expectation, um, but at the same time drive down their costs um, and ultimately um, make them be able to be, you know, the, the best in, in their market and the best in their, you know, customer experience when it comes to ordering um, and ultimately receiving those products. How have the robots impacted the efficiency and productivity of your 3PL fulfillment operations? Yeah, so we, we've definitely seen improvements, you know, in, in kind of two different areas. You know, one is the, you know, the ability to offer improved SLAs um, to our customers. Um, and ultimately, you know, the other piece has been in um, associate satisfaction and safety within the warehouse. You know, associates feel comfortable around the technologies that we've implemented, um, and they actually enjoy working with them that it has improved, you know, improved employee retention um, and actually improved employee 
um, morale that they like working with these technologies because it makes their job easier. And ultimately, at the end of the day, they're able to go home and enjoy um, more, you know, in a more relaxed way, time with their families. Um, or I've heard a lot of stories of people who have more energy at the end of the day, and they're actually able to go home and play with their kids. So that's great to hear that that's true. They have that employ that increased employee morale. How do you ensure that the robots and the human workers collaborate effectively in your warehouses? When we're looking at a solution, it's not just um, you know a group of engineers or you know a group of designers you know going into a back room and, and spitting out a solution. You know, we really bring together a, a whole collaborative approach to designing and ultimately implementing. So that means bringing all the right partners to the table. You know, it's everybody from the engineers and the solutioning teams to the IT partners to you know ultimately our our operations team and, and listening to what they have to say. We also bring our associates to the table and make sure that they're part of that conversation to be able to provide their feedback. So at the end of the day, uh, the solution that we're delivering for the customer is a fully collaborative solution that everybody has buy-in. Everybody feels like they have ownership and nobody feels like something's just being forced upon them um, and being asked to you know, operate something that they didn't have any feedback or input on. Did any of the associates have any or express any hesitancy about working with the robots at all? They do. Um, and, you know, the, the question we always get is, you know, am I going to lose my job? You know, when this when this robot comes in, um, our stance is that technology should be collaborative. It should not be, you know, replacing necessarily people. Um, and so as we bring these technologies in through our testing phases and everything, we like to have our associates be part of that so that when we get to the deployment phases, we, um, they, they already feel comfortable. They've already been able to ask their questions. We encourage the associates to ask as many questions as possible. Um, we also make sure that we spend a lot of time within our training demonstrating the safety features that exist with these technologies so that in the situation that somebody feels uncomfortable, they know how to interact with the technology and ultimately know how to um, put it into a safe mode should they feel uncomfortable with how it's performing. Did you have any challenges that you faced during implementation of the robots? And if so, how did you overcome those? So I think the biggest challenge with robotics um, and operations is, you know, how do you integrate the two? Um, you know, typically you you are bringing together um, a technology and a technology team who are very good at their technology, and you're bringing together an operations team and operators who are very good at operating. At the end of the day, you've got to get both of those speaking um, the same language, and I think that's where you know, especially the role of my team comes in that, you know, as they understand and know both of those languages, they're able to ultimately kind of at the end of the day, be that translator um, for those two so that, you know, technology is speaking operations and operations is speaking technology, and they're able to deliver a collaborative approach. Great. How scalable are your robotic systems and what factors do you consider when you're expanding their use if you do across different fulfillment centers? All of our robotics, you know, especially in the e-commerce sector, we're looking for expandable pieces. As everybody kind of knows, e-com e peak really hits around that Christmas time. It's, it's the new way of shopping. It's the new way people expect to buy and, and receive their things, um, you know, and their items. For Christmas. So a lot of the technologies we're looking at is how are they scalable, especially during those those peak times of the year, um, you know, when it comes to to needing to have that that flexibility. Your mention of peak just reminded me of something I just heard recently that there's another peak in warehouses these days in between back to school and Christmas. There's the Halloween peak. Have you seen that at all? With different with, with different clients, with some of them we have, um, you know that there's you know as, as e-commerce grows and as as um, suppliers and and companies look for new ways to continue to grow their revenue, you know we definitely see changes within the business that um, and businesses that are you know asking for these different peaks 
throughout the year, um, you know, as we see, you know, as you mentioned, back to school, Halloween, you know, you even see things more that are now around seasonal changes. Some some companies are driven around that seasonal change and the opportunity to drive additional business as, you know, summer, you know, spring becomes summer and summer becomes fall and fall becomes winter. Um, there's new opportunities and expanded markets that they're always looking at. And shifting gears, what emerging technologies or trends are you most excited about for the future of 3PL fulfillment? I'm always interested in how technology starts as one thing. Um, You know, you look at it as warehousing and and it starts at warehousing. I think what you'll continue to see out of warehousing, and, and this is more specifically, I think, as for people of the world and, and less as warehousing, but you'll see continue to see those trends that technology starts in the warehouses, but it grows and it grows into people's everyday use. Mm-hmm. I think you'll see these humanoid robots, you'll see robotic technologies that we see things with drones, and you'll see things you know with assisted robots that these technologies will keep to continue to grow within people's lives and their everyday, even home use. And I think as they're growing, your warehousing and your supply chain will continue to expand beyond just the four walls of the physical warehouse. But it'll be how are these technologies now interacting with people on a day to day? And how does warehousing use those technologies that are interacting with people on day to day? to continue to close that gap of order time to delivery. So things like drone delivery, things like assisted robots within houses, they'll begin, they'll continue to integrate and and work directly with warehouses and suppliers to become kind of part of everyday use for people. And going beyond just robots, are there other technologies that you're seeing that are coming into the 3PL industry or you envision coming into the 3PL industry within the next five to 10 years that would help transform the industry? I mean, everybody talks these days about AI. Um, You know, I definitely think AI is going to be a, a big part of that. You know, when you look at technologies, um, you know, a lot of people are fascinated with the physical technologies, and I think we'll continue to see advances within those physical technologies. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of advancement within the, you know, I like to call it the brain of these technologies. How are these technologies optimizing? There'll come a point where you can't physically move things any faster through a warehouse than, than what they are but it will continue to be how do you evolve the brain of these technologies so that when that when you are maximizing that time, you're maximizing it to its fullest efficiency to ultimately drive um, you know, those warehouses to you know, 100% capacity um, as they need to um, and as demand continues to grow. Thank you. What advice would you give to other 3PLs and engineering teams that are considering implementing robots in their fulfillment operations? The the biggest thing I would say, and and it kind of you know goes to say it, you know, is that you know technology is always evolving. So as you're looking at technology, it's not just looking at it for today. It's how does that technology partner ultimately evolve with you? You know, how are they evolving to support your business needs? Um, And also too, how are they evolving as a company? Um, A technology company that just stops evolving is going to get taken over or is going to get surpassed very quickly by their competitors. So as you're looking at technology partners, it's how will they continue to grow and evolve with you as, as technology continues to grow and evolve itself? And what's the one key takeaway you'd like our listeners to remember about the role of robots in 3PLs or warehouses in general? Robots are great things. They will continue to help us as, you know, as the world evolves and as new needs and demands come about. Uh, It's kind of like how the cell phone revolution happened and how the e-commerce revolution happens. You know, there's the robotic revolution. they will continue to be part of our daily lives and they will continue to grow as our daily lives. Um, Embracing that 
um, will help somebody to be able to learn and feel comfortable um, and maybe even come up with the next great idea um, within robotics as as these do become part of our daily lives. Perfect. Thank you again, Tim, for joining me today on Warehouse Automation Matters. It was a fantastic discussion. And thanks as always to our listeners. We're here to help you move what matters in your warehouse.